Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Elite Talk Show. Today we talk about CM Punk. Is he debuting Friday? And how will he debut? We got Jericho and MJF from Wednesday night. Are you happy how it ended? And Max Kasser, is he still getting attention and why? Join us as we have from Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and returning champ. The champ is here. You know who it is. It's DMC Grizzle in the house. Fresh <laughs> off championship win. So excited. <laughs> <sighs> Right, guys thank you for joining us here uh i don't know about you but we've been getting pounded with rain here in syracuse and it's kind of nice to be inside and dry well at least your guys is getting rain like we got a little bit of rain we didn't get no hurricane so <laughs> yeah yeah we got this is the the remnants of you know of the hurricane we got so much rain last night and it, the weatherman said that it's the equivalent of three to four feet of snow good god but, you know, we get that here, but usually it's, you know, over the course of two or three days, not one day. Mm -hmm. We got about one day of rain here in Memphis, and it's been – it's overcast right now. But, yeah, it's been mostly just uh, hot, hot, humid, and um, un unpleasant. So, so where are the people protesting about umbrellas? Like, no umbrellas. We want rain. Like, <laughs> anyway. Their body, their choice. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Let's get uh, into some wrestling, shall we? Uh, so let's let's talk, do some open discussion here. Uh, the hot topic this week: CM Punk allegedly debuting on uh, Friday Night Rampage. We've all heard the rumors. We've seen the speculation, the Easter eggs here and there. Mm -hmm. The promos, the shirts, chick yeah, magnet. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I just want it to be like. I just want them to piss off the fans. I, just, I don't know why, just to piss them off, just to, like, swerve everybody until the end, and then he shows up. So one, <laughs> one theory I've heard, and this makes totally great sense. We'll get into how you guys wanna, want him to debut in just a moment. But, you know, we have Darby Allen come out to the ring, you know, like he did a couple weeks ago, challenge the best in the world. The lights go out. Cult of Personality comes on because we all saw that, you know, they got the rights to the song. That music comes on, and then MJF comes out and trolls everybody. Oh, we expect that would be a good one because that would be a total MJF move. Well, of course, yeah. Um, oh, looks like we got ah, yeah. Foreman like Voltron, the original four. <laughs> I can only be. I'm at work, so I only have a few minutes. But if you're gonna just okay. stop in. I think you should stop in. Brian Bella, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, just at wow. least a quick little – give us just your quick thought about CM Punk coming to AEW. <laughs> it's happening tomorrow, so. Is it really? Yeah. yeah that I mean, is the question, about, though. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. That's exciting, I guess, for people that think that he's worth anything or that he actually cares about wrestling. I mean, yay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm well, that's a good opinion right there. Two, two doubles. But I do oh. have some exciting updates. Like, I'm pretty mad over this. Like, I am so rude. Ooh, look at that. Our, yeah. our old Brian Bella is training to become a wrestler, y'all. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll see. Hopefully, we'll see his first match. Look at that. Ah. You got to go into the YouTube so you can see some of these bruises that he just showed us. 
So. Or you can probably check me out on my Twitter at the Brian Bella. Yes. Can you tell that me how well. excited I am to be here at work today? <laughs> <laughs> so stoked. Uh huh. BB from BBE is training. We have a real wrestler now in the group, y'all. That's right. We are legit now. I just mm -hmm. finished my eight weeks, so we're getting into some big stuff. I don't know what that means, but that's what they tell us. <laughs> is it 12 Whoa. weeks of training? Is that how much it is? Um, I don't know. They haven't given us a, an exact date or anything. I think, it'll, I mean, training is always going to be ongoing regardless. Right. Right. So, so why don't you tell us where you're, why don't you tell us where you're training so you can plug in a little bit. Yeah, you can check us out at Oregon Pro Wrestling School. Um, it's done by Eddie Pearl and his tag team. Well, I should say Ricky Gibson and his tag team partner, um, Eddie Pearl. They're actually great coaches. Also, shout out to Flex. He's absolutely an amazing coach as well. And all of the veterans that come in and help the beginners, it's, it's a really good school. So if you're in the area, definitely check it out. This is and a horrible not, angle for me. And it's not going anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a dick, don't don't come and ruin our vibe. <laughs> there you go. We're so proud of you. Yes. Well, thank you. All right, guys, I gotta go. Um, as far as CM Punk goes, look, if he actually has the passion for it, great. I'm glad to see him. But I don't think it is. I think it's about the Benjamins and the peak, uh, cheap pop, or a very expensive pop if you're AEW. Of course. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> a little quick little cameo from our own Brian Bella. All right. so, so, what do you think about that take, though? That it's just about the money, and it's uh, well, he's not not passionate and doesn't maybe maybe doesn't care as much as we'd like him to. Okay, you have to think about it, though. We have to go way back to 2014 to that little podcast that he did with Cole Cabana, where he said like he felt like he failed as a wrestler because. His thing was is that he wanted the main event. He wanted to be the main event at WrestleMania. You know, he wanted to be the champ, you know. So he, I don't know, like, if he still feels like that. Maybe he has some conversations with different people. Maybe some people have convinced him. I mean, but also he has isolated himself as well. So you never know. Maybe doing heels and kind of reignited his passion a little bit. That, that too, you know, yeah. And I mean, also maybe when he came back to see like, you know, WWE, like when he was doing backstage, maybe like he said that he loved the women, what they're doing, because like that, that was the best thing that he said. Like he only watches the women, you know, so, so, um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know, like maybe uh, this is what I'm hoping for me. I'm hoping like towards the end of the night, he just comes out by himself. They let him cut a promo and then you just hear the deafening CM Punk chants, you know? Right. People are screaming, you know, like, like the holy shit, this is awesome, yeah, yeah, damn, yeah, look, you know, like all of that, you know, and then you see tears in his eyes, he's just like looking around, just seeing the sea of people cheering for him, you know, basking in that glory, you know, just, and that's what I want. Cuts out. Yeah, and then somebody else debuts, I don't know. And, and then he does somebody... something horrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how everything will start. I mean... Know? I know he's going to come back to put over younger talent. So it's like, I know he's going to get those matches with Jungle Boy eventually, uh, probably with Sammy. They're, you know, they're going to have a GTS, you know, go to hell type of, type of match. My finisher's better. It's the same. And then Kenta can show up and they can have a triple threat, which would be amazing. And then we're going to get like a Darby match, I'm sure. And then I'm sure we'll get some MJF, hopefully. If like, I mean, that's, you know, he's definitely not coming back to wrestle Kenny Omega or. Is he? Time will I mean, tell. I mean, look, it's it's a good thing for him to come back to this, I think, because he's seeing the amount of great talent there is in AEW, you know? So I don't think he wants to wrestle, like, maybe Christian or, like, or like Big Show or, like, Mark Henry or any of those, or Jericho even, you know? He'll probably mm -hmm. want to uh, wrestle somebody, like, new-new that maybe he could teach them a thing or two, you know? Right. Like I don't think we I don't think he ever faced Kenta, has he? Any in Ring of Honor? Uh not to my knowledge. Maybe he, he left when they were uh when they started to get some new Japan talent because I know that Kenta faced um Brian Danielson. 
in a tag match. So maybe that's and it. If you want to give me some kind of program that involves Kenta and CM Punk and maybe even John Moxley or something like that, I'm here for it. Absolutely. Because you know that 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 promo from John Moxley, he got a little bitter. He was just like, "Oh, now everybody wants to come here, huh? Y'all want yeah. to prove yourself." <laughs> I, I I like it. And this is we we have. We've got a lot of options here, and, and we got the right company to do something yeah. right with them. Yeah, exactly. And, and not only even for wrestling, also for promo work. I mean, like, CM Punk is a dick. So he can, like, really, like, spar well with others with some promos. So I'm just, you know, for me, I just want him to just be out there just, just a few minutes, just feel the crowd to get his passion back again, you know. I don't know how he's feeling right now. Maybe he's, you know, he's very excited. Because, like, they've been talking to him for, what, like, two years now? Maybe on and off? Mm-hmm. So, how do you feel about it, Sarah? I was just pulling up here an article I saw, uh, the betting odds for CM Punk's first opponent. Uh, before I reveal who it is, according, this is according to Bet Online. Uh, who do you guys think is the favorite to be his first opponent. I think it probably, I would like it to be Eddie Kingston because at least they can do some promo work. I mean. Who's your question about? Who do you think, Bet Online put out a list. You can you can bet on who CM Punk's first opponent in AEW. Oh, CM Punk's, of course. We're still talking about Punk. Um, mm-hmm. Man, I don't. I want it to be Jungle Boy. That's what I want. I don't know if I get that. Neither one of those two cracked the top five. Right now, the odds on favorite at two to one odds is Darby Allen. Even at two well, to course. one? That's a great because, like, they, because he said about like the best in the world, so that's mm-hmm. probably why. Oh, but you know what? Maybe uh, I think Sting it's versus Stanley. CM Punk. I, How about Sting versus CM Punk? I would like to see that. Uh, rounding out the top five, second place, 11, 11 to four odds is Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Dance, as it'll probably be called. Why? Why that? I mean, we already seen those matches. I don't, I don't, I don't know, whatever. But <laughs> I'm sorry. For me, it's just like they're all about first matches. I don't know about seeing like a repeat match. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like I already seen those matches. You can go to Ring of Honor or WWE to see those matches. <laughs> Uh, so the rest of the top five, you got Christian Cage, Orange Cassidy, and Matt Hardy. He's faced Christian Cage and Matt Hardy. I don't get why they're pre- – uh, you know what it is? Maybe it's, they're talking about the first dude maybe to get comfortable and um, maybe like somebody he already knows. Like he has no beef with Christian, I think, because they work together with uh, backstage. So mm-hmm. I, don't know if he's, I don't know if they're cool and they talk like, you know, outside of like work. So Here's the and problem. I, I think I think we have a problem here is that you have everyone has to build up their wins over time, you know, throughout dark and, and, you know, dark elevation when they're not on on your dynamite and et cetera. But and in order for the ranking system to work, that has to happen. Mm -hmm. So but but how do you do that with CM Punk without taking the shine off of it? Like he like that he has to get to 19 and 0 before he gets a title shot. And then you've seen Punk 19 times before you see him have all these you know, crazy dream matches and uh, scenarios that everyone is coming up with. So, I mean, how do you get him his wins without it getting stale before he gets to the matches that you really want to see? And also, we don't even know his deal, though. We don't know if he's going to be a competitor. We don't know if it's just, like, maybe a few months of wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't know if it's, like, a handshake deal. That's another thing that we have to think about. I mean, handshake deals. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like, maybe he just wants, maybe he, he wants to just have one final goodbye, like, his way, and he wants to face the champion, which is Kenny Omega, because he wants to face Kenny Omega. He said that in a few interviews. So, mm-hmm. you know, why not Sam Punk versus Kenny Omega? And then if he wants to retire, then he's done. <laughs> he's done what he's needed to do. He did it in his city, you know. I do also find it interesting that we had... On the flip uh, side... No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say all the, all the Dan Lambert stuff like that promo last night was hot. 
It was great. And like, so but how do you have, it's the greatest promo he'll ever cut. He'll never, he'll never do anything better than that, but it was good. But how do we, d- does that tie into to punk coming back since he was a failed, failed, you know, quote, MMA star. And like, are they going to harp on that? And are they going to lean into it? I don't know. It's just, an, just all, it's all very convenient and interesting. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so on the flip side, they also put out ad, or ads for, you know, Daniel Bryan's first opponent. Any guesses? Of course, they say number one, CM Punk. <laughs> yeah. CM Punk is the odds on favorite, followed by Kenny Omega, Darby Allen, Sting, MJF, and Chris Jericho. Not even Malachi is not even on that list. No, not in the those two list. That's that's mm-hmm. bad. I'm sorry. How do you fit Malachi in with all this? Because I'm trying to figure out what they're gonna do with him. Like they just Cody just put him over mass massively, so they like, yeah. he's not gonna just go do some small feud now. Like, no, no, no. Like I think his feud with uh, uh, Cody is not done. They're probably gonna face again at all out. I, right. I mean, I, facing- I think maybe down the line. I mean, he's facing Arn Anderson's son next week, Brock Anderson. I think that maybe it's some kind of yeah. Yeah. let's let us let us pray for him because he's about to get killed on mm-hmm. national television. <laughs> the first and last match. Yes, I, I give it. I give it maybe two minutes where he just like beats him up a little bit and then just do the black mask and then he covers him like how he covered Cody. <laughs> I was watching this match on uh, Dark the other night. He has a really interesting style. It's going to be a cool match. Oh, uh, Brock uh, Anderson. Yeah, he's uh, like I, I like him. Like I couldn't tell if he was like if he was still kind of new, but no, he just he does really basic things in a kind of a different way. That's the best way that I can I can describe it. And I think it's going to be really cool to see what he and does Mal- he like wrestle like, like his dad though. Right, because I've seen like a few of his matches. Where yeah, he's got some he he's got some classic vibes to him, but he's also a little bit more mobile, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. But um, it's gonna be yeah. cool. Wait, who's who's second for Daniel uh for Brian Danielson? That's what I like to know. You said uh, who was second? Kenny, again? Kenny Omega was second. Oh, of course, yeah. Damn, that's sad. They didn't even put Kenny Omega for CM Punk, but they put that for Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> You know what it is? Maybe because people want him to build his, uh, what is it called, uh, his reps up, so that that way he'll challenge him maybe next year or something. Maybe that's what it is. Whereas Daniel Bryan, he's been do he was been in WWE for over a decade. He just left and he was in a WrestleMania. So I think I think coming in Daniel Bryan would be more deserving of title shots before CM Punk. Yeah, because like he's been out of like wrestling for over seven years, you know. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see what happens tomorrow night. I mean, I'm I'm excited. So, <laughs> uh, next up, we'll talk about the story that just won't go away. Max Caster uh, reportedly unfollowed all AEW stuff, um, NXT, liking some of the stuff. Selling his AEW ring gear, is it for show or is it for real? He wants attention. That's what it is. That's what I think. I mean, he's, he something he's not getting the paycheck for two months. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I get that. Like, he needs to sell some of his merch or his like gear so that that way he can make rent, which mm-hmm. is unfortunate for him. So, yeah, I'm just wondering if his TMZ deal got affected. Mm, we'll he got a TM, we got he got a TMZ deal, so I don't know. I think he's coming back, and I think we'll come back with a new gimmick. I think that's what this is all for. I mean, we saw Anthony Bowens in single action with different music the other night, but he was still wearing some gear that said the acclaimed on dark. He also lost. Um, I mean, we, we know. I mean, he, I mean, he lost a pack, of course. So, but. <laughs> I mean, we know they're all about long term storytelling. So, I mean. This isn't my ex, and Tony's planning something. Well, of course. But it's just like it's un- it's unfortunate that like this little small little thing like really affected them because they were such a great tag team. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm yeah. happy for the fact that the fact that they're probably going to do something different with them, which they're not going to just fire them automatically. But I don't I don't know. Like I don't think anybody wants to see Max Caster 
I think he'll probably get like go away heat instead of like like Uber nuclear heat. I think he'll come back, you know, like the you know the chip on his shoulder kind of wrestler to yeah. make us angry. Yeah, I could see that maybe. Maybe he'll come back and turn on Anthony Bowens, and that's how you know they split them up or something. I like to see that. Hmm. What you think? Mr. Champ. Champ, champ. Um, I mean, I am really more interested in what uh, Dante Martin's up to than <laughs> the fax caster just about hey, every, like, every just, day now. Can we just say <laughs> this is like a blessing in disguise for him because like his brother got injured and he's getting like these amazing matches. He's going like, to, I mean, he, he had what? 30 seconds last night from, you know, by himself, like, and they even, you know, let him stay on the mic that, you know, took Kenny Omega to the limit. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. What do, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> I'm here for it. You got to see him yeah. versus CM Punk. That's what I want to see. Give me Dante Martin, CM Punk. Well, I, want, I want Dante Martin and Ray Phoenix. I want to see what they can do together for 10 minutes. Ooh. Yeah. That's that should great. be good. Mm-hmm. That should be good. Let's talk about Jericho and MJF. I like people. the match. I don't know why people are complaining about it. They What's said that they want to... Exactly. I think a lot of people expected Jericho to win and thought Jericho should have gone over, but Why? You got that's just how that's how WWE groom people to go. You don't you don't get twenty wins in a row on a veteran as a young person. But we see and plus, and plus if they were following the story, which that was the thing about it, mm-hmm. where he remembered he was not to use the Judas effect and that affected him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you oh. you really want to beat your most protected young talent in the in the entire company, even more than Hangman, even more than Darby. I mean, mm-hmm. no. Like he, the MJF has to win, mm-hmm. and he didn't cheat. He couldn't cheat, so MJF's win is clean. And Jericho cheated and lost. Yeah, I love it. He could, yeah, great, he could. Awesome and he story. could use that. He could use that. Be like, look, you used a bat. You had every chance to beat me, and you couldn't. Absolutely. Like this mm-hmm. is this is great. I would have slapped my face if if you know Jericho won, and then this was. Like, unless this was his actual real retirement and, like, this is how he, you know, he, he's going to go out, no. which it's, it's not. But, I mean, no. that, that would be the only way that I would want him to win. No, I, was, I loved the result. I loved all of it. And, it, you know, they didn't dwell on it. They were like, well, Dynamite's over. So now you, like, and which, you know, just kind of leaves all of us to go, what's next? What, what's going on here? You know, it was an awesome kind of cliffhanger for both of their storylines because we don't know where this is going and we have the biggest pay-per-view of the year coming up in two weeks so yes which i I think because here's the thing that i'm noticing now because because technically they don't really do like like they double book or they have the same uh, wrestlers face each other again so many times i think this is kind of like a dig to WWE where they're gonna have a lot of matches that we're already seeing like maybe like a month or two ago that they're going to put on for All Out, which they know it's going to be great. Can we talk about the Inner Circle real quick and how they've, like, they won the match that allowed them to stay together, and now they're, like, kind of broken up in a way? Like, we're seeing them all separately, but they're not, but, you know, we didn't break up. Because we're seeing Sammy by himself. We're seeing uh, Pride and Powerful by themselves. I'm just going to call them LAX, because that's what they are. Mm -hmm. But, um... You know, like, what what are we doing? And where's Jake Hager? <laughs> Is he just taking – he's, like, we haven't seen no, him. No, he was there. Was he, he there? I saw him. Yeah, I think he was there. I don't know. Maybe he's <laughs> – I don't know. I think he's been I away. Mean, I think maybe because – okay. What everybody was talking about, what everybody complained about, like, how this ending was for this match, which I liked, you know. And it's just like it doesn't satisfy the fans too much. So it's like, come on now. You wanted like a great story where he had to fight all these odds to get to MGF and he can't beat MGF, which, you know, it makes sense. He has to use like his friends to help him to beat MGF, which 
I don't know. It's just to me. To me, it's just like I like what the story is. I'm wondering where it's going, which I like because like when the whole Hangman versus MJ, um, Hangman versus uh, Omega was about to happen, I thought that that was the next direction, and then he lost. I was like, oh, now where they're gonna go with that? So. I don't want to see any more. You can't use your finisher matches. I'm done with that stipulation. I'm over it. No, thank you. I just, what? That, that happened just last year. And last night. <laughs> <laughs> enough of that. Sarah, how do you feel about the match, though? You never said how you felt about the match. I thought it was a good match. I thought overall, Danny was pretty good last night. You know, they drew just under a million, uh, 975,000, which is respectable. It's pretty good. I'm sorry, but that moment where they had a lot of segments, that took me out a little bit. I was like, damn, there was like a lot of like segments, promos, and talking. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that the guy that, that did that promo talking about the fans that are in the basement, that did nothing for me. And I don't like that <laughs> Hey Man's, uh, like uh, Murder Hawk is probably going to be. Um, uh, going to be having a match with uh, with uh, what's his name Ethan Page uh, Ethan is it Ethan Page yeah Ethan Page and um, yeah. uh, Scorpio Sky mm -hmm. I, I'm not feeling that uh, that feud now I'm not feeling the whole Big Show versus the uh, Factory oh uh, no no mm. that was I mean maybe maybe it's just a <laughs> one off because I think they want to give like QT Marshall a match I don't know. This is so unnecessary. Unless we get Captain Insano. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is one of the trademarks, right? <laughs> that they got. Yep. To me, it just doesn't feel like a very enticing, you know, feud for Big Show or Paul White, excuse me, to start with. It's QT Marshall. Mm -hmm. I feel like they could have done better. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't. I just. Uh, well, I get why they got together because like big show was protect i'm calling him big show paul white was protecting <laughs> um tony shabani because of course uh the factory was beating up his son you know so i uh, mean qt uh, marshall is a good dick i just don't know why i don't he, think he's a good dick no he's a pretty he's good a, dick i mean he, but he has go away like this is totally 100 percent Go away, Heat. Like, he was getting the wrong kind of booze last night. Hey, but he, he does have a great little meme now with that facial expression he did. <laughs> with the... <gasps> I mean, they've already developed his, his character enough, so I guess if you use him right, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I, just, I would definitely rather see other people doing things than, mm -hmm. than QT, but it is yeah. what it is. The only match that I see that it, it, that's almost already set is Pac versus Andrade, which I'm excited for that match. I can't sure, wait to see yeah. that match. I know those two <laughs> men are gonna like put a banger. All the stipulations. <laughs> hey, he wants to make sure he gets his little pay per view payments. Okay, so right. he he's making sure he's crossed those those T's, dotted those eyes. So, <laughs> can we get an Andrade versus Malachi Black match too? Yeah, of course. Oh no, they're gonna face each other. They're just uh, in due time. They're just right now. Malachi Bark is in that program with Cody, so they're already mm -hmm. teasing it. He's wearing all white. Malachi Black, it's going down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Rampage uh, Last Dance coming up uh, this Friday, or you know, today when this episode comes out. Uh, we got John Moxley against Daniel Garcia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have. Private Party against Jurassic Express in that AEW World Tag Team Eliminated Tournament, which we found out about, which will probably the winner of that will probably get the tag title shot against the Young Bucks at All Out. Jurassic Express, they got robbed. <laughs> Damn Bucks. Sorry, excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's talk about the other match. This is, to me, this is a very funny graphic right here. <laughs> yeah, Big Cargill versus Keir Hogan. Kira Hogan, does she even come up to Jade Cargill's shoulders? Just look at that height. She's thing. short. You didn't realize she's short? She's probably like, what, 5'2", five 5'1"? Five yeah, but you don't usually see it in the promo. Usually they cut it you know, pretty close in the promo so you know, to make it look good. Here is like a moral kind of thing where you know you got the super big, huge guy against you know, the little guy. Yeah. Uh, 
But I'm excited for at least Jade finally being on TV, you know. I mean, like, I'm getting tired of the mm-hmm. vignettes that they've been doing for her. Like, give her some matches, damn it. Yes. You have a star in the making right there. Give her a lot of women to feed so she mm-hmm. could beat them all. And maybe soon enough we'll get Jade versus Britt Baker. And that will be probably the match of the year, kind of. Because I feel like Britt will probably bring it, bring it out from Jade. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I just, to me, it's just like, it's just a little annoying with the whole booking with the women, you know? It's just like, they could do a lot more, honestly. Right. Like, they had Nyla the other night on Dark come out and, you know, do the Nyla thing. She destroyed someone in, like, a minute. And, like, I'm coming for that, for the champion. And, you know, that's, it's the, always the same story with her. Like, she either squashes someone and she's coming after the belt or she gets beat because they want to put somebody over it. And it's like, that's all that they're doing, which is fine, I guess. But I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, she is she is a beast. But um, you know, I wish they would find something a little bit more interesting for her than just you know Vicky saying we're coming for your belts and we don't like you. Like you can. Well, I mean, like right now, like she already faced Brit, so they don't want to do that again. So I don't want to try and. I don't want to see it again. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't need it. I don't yeah. need it. I just wish they would do something more, not yet. more thoughtful. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so. at least not yet. Yeah. Or like for me, I would love to see Nyla versus Jade. That would be a fun match. Like two powerhouse women facing each other. I would like to see that match mm-hmm. one of these days, you know? I mean, Chris Statlander is the next contender because she's been winning since she's gotten back. So so we know that uh, she'll probably be facing uh, Brits. So. Of course. I, you know, I don't know. Like for me, it's just like they have. They have the pieces. Just, I don't know how they're moving it, and I don't like how they're moving it right now. I don't. That's just me. They're moving fast towards a fatal four-way number one contenders match that'll last ten minutes on Dynamite. At, coming on at eight seventeen to eight thirty-two. Oh God, <laughs> that's their time slot, right? <laughs> now, which which event are you guys looking more forward to this weekend? Rampage on Friday. SmackDown on Saturday or TakeOver on Sunday? Walter Dragunov, too, baby. That's, that's going to be it, – it'll be the best thing that happens this weekend. I don't care if CM Punk debuts. It's going to be amazing. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, wrestling Got over fired. wrestling over appearances, my friends, and this is why we're all here. If you haven't watched Walter versus Dragunov, I know this is elite talk, but wrestling is wrestling, and we're all about all of it. And you need to go watch the first one, and you need to tune in to take over for the second one because it will steal the entire weekend, I guarantee it. No, of course, yeah. For me, I think the match that I think a lot of people will be talking about this weekend will probably have to be Sasha versus Bianca. I think those women are going to put on... No, 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 they they just confirmed that they're clear to wrestle. So I think what what they're going to do, if they're smart, I hope they do, they don't have them touch. They don't have them on SmackDown. They'll just do a promo thing and have the girls and then have Bianca choose girls that will face, you know, uh, Zelina and Carmella, which will be smart so that that way they'll build, like, their tag division that they need to do. So, um, and then just have them face on Saturday, you know? That's what I feel. But I think, like, the women, uh, I think uh, Sasha versus uh, Bianca are going to steal the show for, uh, for SummerSlam. You know? Okay. I just feel. And let's just give it up. Like, this is a nice little weekend that we're going to have. Tomorrow is going to be a very busy week of weekends. Tomorrow, there's like three things happening. There's uh, there's Impact Emergence. Then there's SmackDown. And then there's uh, Rampage. Ooh, Too much show. <laughs> there's a GCW <laughs> show this weekend, too. I'm like, my God, y'all. Sorry, I've been oh, up for like eight hours, so it's it's not. I'm not yawning because it's boring. I'm just yawning because I'm so dead. I'm so tired. But yeah, you're probably even more tired after all these matches. <laughs> you know, I I got a wedding on Saturday, which will take up most of my day. But then I got Sunday money off, which is just going to be a wrestling marathon, pretty much. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, I'm just okay. <sighs> Who's excited for a Cena versus Reigns? Are you guys excited for that match for this weekend? Uh, I'm interested. I'm You're not interested. pumped. I'll agree. 
on a scale of one to ten, I think I'm about a seven. You know, as far as excitement for it, it just feels like we know Roman's going to win because seeing the movie, so he's not going to be there. If we if he had no movie scheduled after you know SummerSlam, and the mystery was there, like oh, is he here long term? Is he just doing? Is he just going to leave right after? Then it'd be a little more interesting. Yeah, but the fact that we know he's going in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, if that takes away from but it. Knowing, but knowing Cena, he's going to give you that disbelief. He's like, oh my god, it looks like he is about to win. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know, maybe this will trigger, like, trigger the uh, event somehow to, like, think that it's 2009 or something like that, and then we'll have somebody lose the title the night after a major pay-per-view. Um you know, that's totally like a Vince thing that he would do that he hasn't done in a long time. So or, maybe, maybe I mean, Cena Biggie, wins and then loses to Drew McIntyre. Look, Biggie is still has that briefcase, so there is still that chance. So I, I still hope that it's Biggie versus Lashley, you know, that he cashes it in on him, you know? Mm-hmm. But, see, you go ahead, sir. I think I think he's gonna cash on Bobby Lashley. I think that's how they intend to bring the New Day back together. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Because, like, okay, okay, because that's the, that's the other thing. It's just, like, depending on where they put the, that match on the card, too. Like, Lashley versus Goldberg. You know that has to be the first match. I hope that so. Has to be, I hope that's the first match to make the, to set up the tone, like how they did with Drew versus uh, a Goldberg. I, I remember just seeing all the podcasts. Everybody's getting nervous. Like, oh, my God. Oh my mm-hmm. god, he's about to win. No, no. <laughs> now the last last couple of Goldberg matches really haven't been super spectacular. Do you think Lashley can bring something out in him? I hope he destroys him. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm sorry. I love the fact of what he did with Kofi. I love Kofi, but I love that part where it was about the storyline bases. And I hope that he demolishes Goldberg so that him and Grain are the top tier type of cha- uh, champion mm-hmm. that a lot of people need to really up their game so that they can face them. You know, okay. that's the honest truth for me. You know, I mean, like if it if it's like an even type of match, I'm gonna be just pissed off about it. No, yeah, if this match is longer than three minutes, I'm gonna be upset. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. If he's dominating, if Le- if Lashley is dominating uh, Goldberg throughout the whole match. And it's more than five minutes. I'm fine with it. I don't oh. want Goldberg to try to do a roll up type of win. No. no, get out of there with that. No. Yeah, please don't try to wrestle. Right. <laughs> so before we cut out here, I got, I got a really interesting question for you guys to end the show. Um, but first, we want to throw our congratulations to Sammy Guevara uh, as they were filming Dark Elevation before Dynamite last night. He proposed to his girlfriend, and she said yes. Yay! So, congrats to Sammy. Yes, how sweet. Oh, <laughs> how about that match last night? I was. <laughs> I know. I enjoyed that match. You know. <laughs> I mean, that cutter from the top rope. Like, I was like, "How are? You, why are you kicking out?" And then, of course, we found out later because he wanted to hit the go to hell. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm like, "How do you kick out of uh, the cutter from the top rope?" That was. You just got face planted from it. A distance, like what? Oh, it was brutal, and he and sold it so well. I, I, I think he even crossed his eyes. He was like, Ugh. <laughs> "It was a great sell." Mm-hmm. So, I'll give you guys this question as we sign off here. Uh, you know, we we're all on the internet. We all read the news sites. We all see some of the insights of how it can work. If you can go back to being completely ignorant, not knowing how everything works backstage and just stay kind of in that dark and just enjoy the product for what it is, would you? Or do you enjoy kind of being in the no more? I think I didn't start hearing rumors and like reading the internet until maybe it passed 2005. Because that's when I was starting to hear about like the independent wrestling. Like, you know, I heard about Mercedes Martinez and cheerleader Melissa and um, Miss Chief, I think her name was. Mm-hmm. So I was hearing about some women that were wrestlers, and then then you hear some of the backstage stuff, you know, and you're just like, "Wow, really? Did that really happen?" <laughs> <laughs> like, like I heard about like Dom Marie getting fired because she got pregnant, you know, and so <laughs> that was so like you, past. 
do you think it's better to have the inside knowledge or do you think would you rather just be a fan and not know i'd rather be a fan and not know honestly that would i think for me it would be more because like when i found when i saw that christian was in tna that shocked me because i didn't hear about that mm -hmm. so i was just like oh he's in tna that's when i started watching tna and then i started watching tna with wwe so Dan, what about you I like the knowledge because I don't like you know I get real invested when you're a kid you get invested in the characters when you're older you get invested in these people and mm -hmm. as much as I love you know Hangman Adam Page I'm still concerned concerned about Steve Mullitz I think his name is mm -hmm. um, is, is is his shoot name so it's like I'm I care about him as a person and I love his character you know so. If I don't know that every time he gets he goes to the outside or block, et cetera, et cetera, lands on top of nine people, and if I have to really c consider are all these people okay all the time, it's not like I'll, I'll just die. Like I, there's no way that I can be that emotionally invested because I care about all all these people a lot because we watch them so much, and you know we we get sad when 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 somebody dies, like you know, and uh, you know we understand the human aspect of it, and uh, plus it also helps with the uh, suspension. Of a belief, you know, that you're saying, well, I know this was work, but that looked like it fucking hurt, you know, yeah. or something like that. So I, it's, it's easier on me actually knowing that everyone's mostly yeah. okay. I agree with that. And they know what yeah, they're doing. That's a good point right there. Yeah. All right. So we'll end it here. Uh, don't forget to check us out as you've seen streaming on your Apple podcasts, on, you know, YouTube, subscribe to us there, Twitter at Oklahoma ENT. Uh, merch store, shopbucklebomb.com. New t-shirt debuting this Sunday. Can't wait for you guys to see that. Uh, you can find me at the real Sarah BBE. Hey, man, Adam Page's real name is Steve Waltz. Sorry, sorry, Hangman. I don't know why I said Steve Waltz. Waltz. Okay. Waltz, W-O-L-T-Z. My bad, bro. Love you. <laughs> Glad you're having a kid. Glad you're reproducing. Uh, DMC Grizzle, it's your boy. Find me on Instagram and Twitter. Mostly just go follow all the all the buckle bomb stuff. It really helps. Give us a like on these YouTube videos. Yep. <laughs> like, subscribe, tell your friends, you know. I've been telling my friends, they've been listening to this other podcast. You know, okay. give us some numbers. Uh you can find me at Twitter at Orly1985 underscore BBE. Go ahead and give me a follow, guys. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Bye everybody.